when we open up the plugin, this is what comes up. And if you've seen or used the original hardware, or really anything from this era from this manufacturer, it probably has some degree of familiarity. And hold up a second, I know the propensity might be to see and think maybe like a Duke Nukem version of an 1176 operating in all buttons in mode or something like that. And unfortunately I'm here to dispel any hopes for something of that nature, but I will offer a brief explanation as maybe a consolation to why this would be both impractical and maybe why a FET compressor that's not this design idea might be interesting in other ways. We might think that the character of the 1176 squashing might be in direct relation to its set ratio. So a limiter with a theoretical infinity to one ratio might do something more to this effect. But the ratio is only one aspect. Somewhere above 10 to 1, the ratio ceases to have hugely meaningful impact, all other parameters remaining equal, and perceptually becomes a limiter whether the actual measurable ratio is infinity to 1 or not. FET 162's limiter design averages about a 20 to 1 effective ratio, about like the highest single button setting on the 1176. So then we should also consider the timings. A more versatile initially designed unit like the 1176, the attack times are plenty fast to showcase the FET design's response time, and the release times are fast to medium length to emphasize the compressor's behavior. In a design more strictly focused on limiting, the FET's fast attack response would also be useful, but accompanied with a slower release time to maintain transparency and prevent more overs. And FET 162's sort of factory design is built around this concept. But perhaps the biggest difference is the change in knee shape. We looked at the nonlinear compression curves of FET designs in the last video and saw how these devices change the ratio is by lowering the ceiling on these curves, which compresses this soft transition region. So how does this factor into the 1176's all buttons in behavior? It's important to remember that while now all buttons in is as ubiquitous as the 1176 itself, it was originally more of an exploit of the design that was not intended for use, but easy enough to mod without even opening the case. Since the ratio buttons just lower the operational ceiling of the circuit, what happens if we press them all in? And as you might be intuitively inclined to think, it compounds them all together, giving us a higher ratio, sure, but perhaps more importantly, squishing the operating region down to where the knee is the most feasibly hardest for a FET design. So more squish than 1176 squish is really not possible in a FET design, apart from different timing flavors. So if maybe this is what we're after, a VCA topology where the knee can get harder still, might be a better route to pursue, and something like the API 2500, which has a feedback mode even, could be a good choice to consider in this regard. There's enough 1176 emulations to squash virtual drum buses forever, so I thought maybe a softer, more transparent design might showcase some of the more overlooked qualities of FET compressors and offer a comprehensive FET compressor modeled on analog hardware that's not just trying to be another 1176. And I'll cover more of the design-specific differences a little later. And while the compression behavior might be softer, it's still a mid-60s unit with plenty of harmonic excitement on tap. The original unit is pretty simple, both in design and operation. Like a lot of the gear from this era, its strength was in all the functions it provided in one package. Designed as a microphone preamplifier, with additional line level signal summing capabilities and this handy safety limiter, with slow, fast settings intended as music and speech timings respectively, 
This unit was an action-packed powerhouse for getting material onto limited multi-track tape machines, and the limiter of course used a FET circuit design, as would be cutting edge for the mid-60s, as demonstrated by the success of the 1176. And while projects like the Mini Compressor series allow me to look at lots of different circuit designs and kind of use my problem-solving skills to develop algorithms that kind of account for the flexibility needed to address these design differences, I also enjoy projects like these, where I can kind of focus on one specific design, bring out, enhance, or capture that in a more specific sense than would be possible from starting with a more versatile design. And so thinking about FET designs, specific hardware designs, I wanted to do something maybe that hadn't been done to death yet. And this particular unit, maybe with a little love, provided the best example, I think, of kind of maybe something differently nuanced that could be done with a FET hardware model. While FET gain reduction circuits all operate on the same principles I discussed in the mini FET video, there are different types of FETs, and this design uses a MOSFET instead of the JFETs typically found in 1176s and other more versatile compressor type FET designs. And this difference plays a key role in helping set this unit apart as what we would think of more as a limiter in design and less like a traditional compressor. I'm going to be expanding on concepts presented in the mini FET video to explain these differences, so if you haven't seen that, check it out first. From the information in the last video, we might be inclined to think of field effect transistors operating like this garden hose analogy, with water flowing through it and the gate acting like applying pressure to pinch the hose, restricting the flow through the hose. And we notice this pinching behavior led to these nonlinear compression curves when compared with ideal VCAs. Now we are going to look briefly again at these nonlinear curves to better understand the next part. At a glance, we might be inclined to see these curves as having two regions, this type of linear trajectory and then this other type of linear trajectory. And when the FET is operating in either of these two trajectories, we differentiate that by saying it's operating in linear mode or operating in saturation mode. And as we might expect, saturation mode is analogous to how we would think of this term in regards to audio signals, where large relative changes in input signal become only small relative changes in the output signal. These two concepts are so related that if we were to build a basic FET circuit and pass audio through it while operating the FET mostly in the saturation region, we would essentially have a very basic solid state guitar preamplifier circuit. So then how does this apply to compression? In the guitar preamp example, the FET is reacting nearly instantaneously to the signal. As such, the volume changes are happening very quickly so quickly that we perceive the side effect of added harmonic content more prominently than the volume changes themselves. When we use a FET in a compressor design, it's still doing the exact same thing, except we apply a timing circuit that slows down and smooths out the response of the control signal, reducing the distortion of the waveform and added harmonics so the volume changes become the most prominent aspect. So what does all this have to do with JFET versus MOSFET designs? To put it all together, we need to look at one last thing. FETs can be architecturally designed in two flavors or modes, depletion mode and enhancement mode. JFETs are depletion mode devices, and the MOSFETs we will see acting on audio signals will typically be enhancement mode devices. And we can think of the differences in depletion and enhancement modes as being like how audio compression and expansion are very closely related in how we define them and how they work, but they work in the opposite way from each other. Back to the water hose analogy. This analogy will still hold up nicely when we talk about JFETs and depletion mode FETs. But let's now look at the gate as an actual gate to see how MOSFETs and enhancement mode differs from JFETs and depletion mode. With JFETs, the gate starts open and closes as the voltage changes. In this gate analogy, 
we can look at there being some friction or resistance and this sort of push that's needed to sort of start this action and this push also affects how the gate comes to a close giving us this nonlinear response while the gate is in the process of being closed. MOSFETs in enhancement mode start with the gate closed, with the same sort of push happening when we begin opening the gate, and this gives a similar but slightly different nonlinear curve. The linear section is smaller, and the saturation section is flatter which would make MOSFETs a poor choice if our goal is to exploit this transition region to be able to offer something like a ratio control, but makes MOSFETs perhaps the superior choice if the goal is to design a limiter circuit. So I hope this provides some useful insight into the differences in MOSFETs and JFETs as they apply to audio signal processing and maybe some useful info on why this compressor might be a little different than just another 1176 or Compex type design. And then just a few things to cover on the plugin itself. Like on MiniFET, the threshold and input sort of work together and provide both workflows for kind of setting the ceiling. The original unit has swappable cartridges for mic and line inputs with a small assortment of choices to fit your use case. And while I debated about what, if anything, to do about this, I decided against any explicit input modeling to keep this flexible and focused on the limiter. And I think these concepts would be better suited in a dedicated saturator type plugin anyway at least in my opinion. On the X version, instead of dual controls with linking and unlinking for the input and output, they have a ganged or linked control first, and then a balance control second, which lets you offset the balance at both the input and output in either left-right configuration or mid-side to fine-tune the independent channel behavior. I thought this was better than toggle switches and felt more like what I'd imagine for a mid-side type feature if it existed on a unit from this era. A great deal of consideration has been taken to keep this design faithful to the original while greatly expanding its sort of usefulness in a modern production or mixing context. The attack and release settings are decoupled on this design to allow slow or fast settings independently and these timings were designed with limiting applications in mind. As such, the range is kind of fast and faster on the attack, and slow and slower on the release. But these resistor mod buttons let you swap to an alternate set of resistors that allow for a more medium to slow attack and medium to fast release when engaged, to get maybe more into pumpy compressor territory. This SC Lo-Fi or Sidechain Lo-Fi control is of particular interest. It's a way to sort of control how much influence the sort of magnetic field of the FED disturbs the signal. And it's more physically modeled than like adding in a colored noise as might typically be done for this type of effect. It's a subtle difference but can add some extra grit and character. This shape control gives access to fine tune the shape of the knee opening up the limiting behavior slightly to breathe a little more. FET drive, which enhances the harmonic distortion. The external sidechain on the plus and X is accessible from the settings bar on this plugin. Take advantage of the holiday savings and holiday bundles only through December 29th.